Welcome back to the Cozy Rosie Crochet Channel. I'm Fiona and today I am taking you through part four of the Holly and Berry's Stocking Crochet Along. In our last video, we successfully turned our heel and that should now be completed. And of course, your ends should be woven in. I'm sure you're proud that I already have done. What we're going to do today is we're going to go on to complete the foot section of our stocking. As always, if you need to, you can find the written pattern linked in the description box below, along with all the materials you need. If you haven't already made part one or part two, and even part three, they're all linked for you in the Easy Christmas Patterns playlist, which is all linked in the description box too. Now for our foot section, we're going back to our main colour, which for me is, of course, the red. I'm using Paintbox Yarns Simply Chunky in shade number, now I have to look, 314. And of course, we're continuing with our 6mm crochet hook. I have my now discontinued Furls Cafe Swirl. So grab your stocking and all your materials because we're going to rejoin our yarn into our heel, ready to work in turned rows to complete the foot section. So we need to make sure that the right side of our heel is facing us. So that's the side that's on the same side as on the outside of our stocking. So it's almost as if you had it placed down, kind of keeping the heel facing to you as opposed to looking at the inside of the stocking. Now we're looking to join in the 10th stitch of our heel. So we need to count round from the beginning of our heel here, so into that last um, stitch that we made. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There's number 10. Now, because this was a wrong side, you need to kind of turn it towards you to see where your stitches are. And we're joining in that 10th stitch, counting from the edge of our heel. I'm just going to place my hook there because it saves me getting a stitch marker out. Then I'm going to join our yarn into this stitch here. So I'm just placing the yarn over my hook with the tail facing away from me and just bringing it through that 10th stitch. Just going to make a chain one to secure. Now that chain one does not count as a stitch. So what we're going to be doing next is starting by working one US single crochet into the same stitch as our chain. So just reinserting the hook into the one we've just joined. I'm going to yarn over the hook to bring my loop back through and yarn over and pull through too. You know I like to save time so I am going to work over this end as far as I can, this tail, so that I can get that woven in at the same time. Once we've worked that first US single crochet, we're going to work one single crochet into the next nine stitches. So that's one, two, three, four, five, Seven, eight, and nine. Oops. I'm not going to work over my tail for this last one. Once you've worked those next nine single crochets, it brings us to the slip stitch that we use to join the last row of the heel. And we're going to skip this stitch and instead we're going to work into the next. 18 stitches working along the bottom of our leg of our stocking. So I've inserted my hook and as just continuing working our US single crochet all the way around. And there should be 18 to work, so that was one. I'll leave you to work those, I'm not gonna count all 18, you'll get bored of me. And I'll meet you when, once you've worked those 18 along the bottom of the leg and I'll meet you there. So once you've worked those 18 stitches, you'll be back to where we worked the other slip stitch in the other side of our stocking. And again, we're going to skip this stitch. We're then going to work one single crochet into the next nine stitches on back up working on our heel. So there's our slip stitch and there's our first stitch to work into on our heel. And we're just working nine single crochets again to bring us back to where we joined. almost a relief when your stitch count works out. So at the end of row one of our foot, we've rejoined our yarn and worked all the way around. So skipping those slip stitches, so it minimizes any hole at the side of our stocking, as you can see here. And we're all the way back to where we rejoined our yarn. Now, because I'm just gonna put on this tail and hopefully that, there we go, that disappears. Um, 
We're not going to join this because we're going to work it flat like we did the leg and then we're going to seam it. So we're not going to slip stitch to join or anything like that instead. So at the end of row one, you should have a stitch count of 37 US single crochets. And as I've said, we're not going to join this round. We're going to work in rows the same way that we worked our leg and we are going to seam it at the end of working this foot section. So going into row two, we're going to start with our chain of one for our turning chain. And then for row two, we're going to work one single crochet into the same stitch as our chain one that just we just worked. And then we're going to work one single crochet into each of the next seven stitches. So work those seven single crochets and I'll meet you in a moment. And once we've worked those seven single crochets, you can see that we're back to where our heel was joined. And what we're actually going to do is work one half double three together. So for this stitch, we're going to yarn over as you would for a normal half double crochet, insert our hook, yarn over and bring our loop up. Instead of yarning over to pull through and complete this stitch, we're going to repeat that a further two times. So we yarn over, insert our hook, bring another loop up. So we've now got one, two, three, four, five. And then for a third time, we yarn over again, insert our hook, yarn over, bring up another loop. So we've now got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven loops in our hook. And we're gonna yarn over and pull through all seven loops. I'll go back and I'll do that again because a lot of people struggle when they've got, I know you've just worked all these wonderful berry stitches, but if you've not done this before, you might be working a bit tight. So yarn over, bring a loop up, insert again. Oh, I didn't yarn over, did I? Yarn over, insert, bring a loop up, yarn over, insert, bring a loop up. When you're at this point, pull down, yarn over and pull down. You see how much more space that gives us to pull through. Keep your hook really straight and you should go straight through all of those loops. And that's our half double three together, okay? Once we've worked our half double three together, we're going to work one single crochet into each of the next 15 stitches. So that's all the way back to, I think it's one stitch before our heel, but do count them just to make sure. So work your 15 single crochets and I'll meet you in a moment for the next half double three together. So I've worked my 15 single crochets and we're gonna work a half double, oh sorry, yeah, a half double three together over the next three stitches again in the same way. So we yarn over, insert our hook, yarn over, bring a loop up, yarn over, insert our hook into the next stitch, yarn over to bring a fifth loop up for a final time. We're going to yarn over, we're inserting our hook into the next stitch, bringing that final loop up. We should have seven loops in our hook. We're going to yarn over, just gently tug down and pull through all seven loops. And then we are ready to work one single crochet into each of the next eight stitches to complete our second row. So work those eight and I'll meet you at the end of row two. So at the end of row two, you should now have a stitch count of 33 because we've reduced down our stitch count by working these half double crochet threes together. Now what that stitch or that decrease stitch does is it kind of fills in the space between by bringing the stitches together and just leaving one stitch at the top. I also like that it's left a little bit of texture there for us as well to kind of correspond with our berry stitches. Going into row three, we start with a chain of one. And this time it's a little bit boring. <laughs> We're just gonna work one single crochet into each stitch around back to the end of the row. So work your single crochets one into each stitch around and I'll meet you at the end of row three. At the end of row three, you should still have a stitch count of 33 single crochets and you can see that our foot is already taking shape and coming out towards a foot shape. Really, I don't know how else to word that. But we've done our first three rows and we're going to go straight into row four. We're going to start with a turning chain of one. Oops turn our work, ready to work back along these rows again. We're going to work one single crochet into the same stitch as our chain one and then we are going to repeat our berry pattern. So we start of course by yarning over, inserting our hook into the next stitch, bring our loop up, yarn over, pull through the first loop. 
we yarn over the hook again, insert our hook, yarn over, bring up another loop, yarn over, pull through that next loop, leaving us with those five loops on our hook, ready to yarn over and pull through all five loops. As always, we close with that chain one before we're going to slip stitch into that next stitch. I'm sure you are incredibly familiar with this beautiful stitch pattern now. We'll go through it one more time. So we yarn over the hook, insert our hook into the next stitch, yarn over, bring a loop up, yarn over and just pull through that first loop. We yarn over, insert the hook into the same stitch, yarn over, bring a loop up, yarn over, pull through that first loop. So we have five loops on our hook, yarn over, pull through all five loops and we close the stitch with a chain one. We're then going to slip stitch into that next stitch again. So we're going to repeat this all the way around, working our berry stitch, closing it with a chain one, and then slip stitching into the next stitch all the way around. And you finish in your last stitch with a slip stitch. And that's where I'm going to meet you in a few moments. So keep working those berry stitches followed by your slip stitch. And I'll see you soon. So at the end of row four, you should have a stitch count of 16 berry stitches, 16 slip stitches, and of course that lonely single crochet at the beginning. Going into row five, oh, I've already done my chain one, I'm naughty, sorry, getting ahead of myself. So we're gonna chain one as our turning chain. And just like we did before, we're gonna start by working one single crochet into the slip stitch from the previous row. That was my dog, Emily, snoring. I'm not gonna cut it because no one believes me, but it really was. Um, so we're gonna work one single crochet into that first slip stitch that we just worked in the previous row. So once we've worked our single crochet, we're gonna skip that chain one and work into the top of that berry stitch, just working one slip stitch. So the same as we were doing before. So then we're gonna work a single crochet into the slip stitch between those two berry stitches. We skip the chain one and work a slip stitch into the top of the berry. There we go. So we're just going to repeat that all the way across, working one single crochet into oof, it's a really dark day. And even with my bright light on, I'm struggling to see these stitches. So we work a single crochet into in between those two berry stitches. We skip that chain one work into the top of the berry stitch, which is that bigger of the two loops with a slip stitch. So repeat that all the way across and you'll be working a single crochet into the last stitch when you get to it. So I will meet you at that last stitch. Once you've worked your single crochets, skip your chain one and slip stitch into the top of that berry, ready for the end of row five. So I've just worked my last single crochet into the top of that last berry stitch. And then I'm just going to work one final single crochet into that last stitch. And that's the end of row five. So our stitch count at the end of row five is going to be 17 single crochets and 16 slip stitches. Still gives a stitch count of 33. So we're going to go straight into row six because we've got another row of berries to be adding. So we start with a turning chain of one ready to work our next row of berry stitches. We want to place our next berry stitches in between these ones. So we start by working one single crochet into the same as our chain one. We're then gonna work a slip stitch into the next stitch. And now we are ready to begin our berry stitches. So we start by yarning over the hook, inserting, yarn over, bring a loop up, yarn over, pull through that first loop, Yarn over, reinsert your hook into the same stitch. Yarn over, bring a loop up, yarn over, and just pull through that next first loop. Yarn over and pull through all five loops, closing with our chain one. And of course, we're then gonna slip stitch into the next stitch. I always like to just double check that I've got it into the right place, which is in between, and there it is, it's in between those berries there. We're then going to continue to repeat that all the way across, working one berry stitch, closing it with, of course, a single crochet, followed by a slip stitch into the next. There it is, it's bigger than I thought. There we go. 
So we're going to repeat that all the way around. And when you get to your last slip stitch, there's going to be one stitch remaining. And in that last stitch, we're going to work a single crochet again. So complete repeating that all the way across and I'll meet you at the end of row six. So I'm just working my final single crochet in row six, which completes row six. And you should have a stitch count now of 15 berry stitches and you've got 16 slip stitches and of course two single crochets, one at each end. So going into row seven, we're going to start with a chain one and we need to just fill up these spaces in between to make our rows flat again. So we start by working one single crochet into the same as our chain one and then we're going to work a single crochet into the top of that slip stitch from the previous row. We skip that chain one working a slip stitch into the top of the berry stitch just as we did in that previous row followed by a single crochet in between those two berry stitches. We're skipping that chain one again and working one slip stitch into the top of the berry. Making sure that you work your single crochet in between your two berry stitches followed by a slip stitch in the top of the berry itself, ignoring that chain one. So repeat that around and I'll meet you at the end of row seven. In that last stitch of row seven, you must remember to work our single crochet into that last stitch just to complete it. At the end of row seven, you'll now have a stitch count of 16 slip stitches and 17 single crochets, maintaining our stitch count of 33. And you can see, if I turn it the right way, how our foot is extending itself all the way down. So for rows eight and nine, we're going to do the same. So we're going to start by making a turning chain of one. Oops, I don't have quite as much room when it's not on my lap. <laughs> and we're going to work one US half double crochet, a UK half treble crochet into each stitch across. And we're doing this for two rows, which is row eight and nine. So work rows eight and nine, working one half double crochet into each stitch across. And then I'll meet you back for row 10. So at the end of row eight and nine, you should still have a stitch count of 33. Just this time there were half double crochets. And going into row 10, you need to make sure that you're working so that you can see the wrong side of your pattern because rows 10 to 13, we're simply gonna repeat we're simply going to repeat rows four to seven. You'll find a timestamp or a link for rows four again, and it will, you can just follow that through. So what we're doing is we're repeating our berry rows once again, so we have some more texture on our foot. So we're going to do rows 10 to 13 is a repeat of rows four to seven, and then I'm going to meet you back for row 14 once you've completed those four rows. So at the end of row 13, you should now have a stitch count of 33 still. So you've got the 17 single crochets, 16 slip stitches, and we're going straight into row 14. But I hope you're looking at how brilliant your foot is coming out. You should have two sections of these beautiful bobble stitches now. And um, we're going to go straight into row 14. No. Yes. We're going to go straight into row 14. I've already done my turning chain. No, I haven't for once. <laughs> That's rare. So going straight into row 14, we're going to start with a turning chain of one and we're just going to work one half double crochet into each stitch across. Um, so we'll have a stitch count at the end of this one is still of 33 stitches. So work one half double crochet into each stitch across and I'll meet you ready for row 15, which is our final row of our foot. And we're going to be fastening off after row 15. But let's get this row 14 done, and then I can tell you the stitch for row 15. So at the end of row 14, you should still have a stitch count of 35 half double crochets. We're going to go straight into our final row, which is row 15. And I'm just going to turn my work. I've done my turning chain of one. And for row 15, very simply, we're going to work one single crochet into each stitch across. Now, once we've worked this final round, oh, final row, sorry, we are going to fasten off. We're going to leave a long enough tail so that we can sew up our foot section um, before our next video. So obviously, if you've, you're doing this and you're following along, um, the next video will be out in the next few days, and that will be to work the final sections 
of our holly and berries crocheted stocking so the final video is going to be for us to work our toe section which is worked in the round followed by our little hanging loop now it's up to you uh, we'll probably talk about this next time but if you want to start thinking ahead about what color you want your hanging loop to be in make sure that you've got a little bit of yarn left over to work your hanging loop if it's going to be in your main color um, i'm probably going to do mine in red just so you know because in case santa gets his um coal covered hands you know his hands dirty on the coal coming down the chimney so i do have a wonderful imagination don't i so i'm going to just finish off row 15 because i'm pretty much here now and then we can get ready to sew up our foot so you're going to need your darning needle but first of all make sure that you fasten off after row 15 with a long enough tail for seaming. So as always, you're gonna need probably, if you look at the length of the section that you're seaming, you will need one, two, three lengths of what you're seaming. I always do a little bit extra. I always have far too much. And then you are of course ready to fasten off. Just gonna use my hook to bring that through. I did do a little chain one to create our knot. And then we are ready finished with that colour for now, uh, ready to seam. Now, when we did our leg, we turned our stocking inside out. So I'm going to thread my needle and then turn the well, the whole stocking inside out this time um, just by kind of pushing it through. It's quite a firm pattern, so you're not going to do any damage by doing this because it is really better to whip stitch it with the wrong side facing. Oh, how naughty am I? Oh no, we just did that bit, didn't we? I think I'd left an end that I hadn't woven in. It's close enough. I've woven in enough for that. Get rid of that end. So once you've got your darning needle on, see if I can get back into position. I don't know why I seam with my other hand. It's just the way that I am. I'm just going to place the ends together. And again, this is quite an important bit to make sure you've got it where you need it to be because we don't want it to twist at this point. So it should lay flat um so that your heel is flat ready to join your edges because you don't want to miss stitch this and it twist your pattern so again we're just going to whip stitch so i'm going to work through the bottom of that first stitch on the other side of my pattern just to join them and then we're kind of working in a circular fashion to join and working through each stitch at the row ends we're joining along the end of these rows make sure that you're working into the same point on both sides of your stocking and whip stitch that all the way down once you're happy with your whip stitching you can of course weave your ends in and fasten off any loose ends and then join me again for our next video which is going to be the final part of this kind of mini crochet along to make our stocking. And as I mentioned earlier, we're going to be doing our toe followed by the final hanging loop ready to hang those stockings either above the fireplace or from the bedpost or wherever you traditionally hang them. Mine normally just go um, on a mantelpiece, but we haven't got a mantelpiece at the moment. Um, I'm hoping we can get a new one soon. I'm not going to rush. There's bigger things to worry about, aren't there, in the world at the moment? So I am going to leave you to finish your seaming and weave your ends in. And I will see you again for our next video. Until then, keep it cosy.